Thanks, Tom. Good evening. My name is Edward Cato Sanchin Oberholzer. I'm the resident priest here at the Joseph Priestley Zen Sangha in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. We're an affiliate of Empty Moon Zen. Now is the winter of our discontent, made glorious summer by the son of York. Ah. And it has been a winter of our discontent, perhaps an entire year of our discontent. This past winter in particular, and the autumn before that, and the summer before that, and the spring before that. Pandemic aside, it, it can, if it can ever be set aside, I don't seem to ever be able to find a place to live that doesn't flip from the icy depths of winter straight to the full-blown heat and humidity of summer without pausing for more than a passing glance at spring. But nevertheless, spring, a new spring, arrived this morning at 5.37 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time here in central Pennsylvania. At least that's what the Farmer's Almanac tells me. And when you live surrounded by soybean and cornfields, you pay attention to the Farmer's Almanac. I know that for many of you, the equinox dawned, so to speak, in the middle of last night, the witching hour, and that for many of you, particularly those of you in California, the idea of four seasons, however skewed, is an amusing East Coast conceit. But here it is. Yes, here it is. Wendell Berry, that poet of Appalachian farmland, wrote, Geese appear high over us, pass and the sky closes. Abandon, as in love or sleep, holds them to their way, clear in the ancient faith. What we need is here. And we pray, not for new earth or heaven, but to be quiet in heart and in eye clear. What we need is here. Yes, what, what we need is here and now, in this place, in this time, in this first evening of spring, we sit on our cushions in the still darkness. We sit surrounded by our companions on the way, even if virtually. We sit here and we pray to be quiet in heart. Those geese flying overhead, landing in the fields behind the house just outside this window behind me, gleaning the fields of stray corn cobs left from late autumn. This is all they need. This is all they have. For them, nothing is missing. That field, this sishin, this time is complete, virtually, magically, in the grid of form, in the expansiveness of the boundless, complete. What could be added? Wuban gives us, in the verse to accompany case 19 of the gateless gate, spring comes with flowers, autumn with the moon, summer with breeze, winter with snow. When idle concerns don't hang in your mind, that is your best season. This moment, this spring equinox, this season. 775 years ago on another March 20th, deep in the mountains of central Japan, at the temple de Butsuji, our ancestor Ehe Dogen spoke to his assembly saying, the boundless sky is the nose of all people. The vast earth 
is the legs and feet of all people. Therefore, the ancestral teacher, Bodhidharma, came from the West and directly clarified how all Buddhas appear in the world. The nose performs the Buddha work of the eyes. The eyes perform the Buddha work of the, of the ears. The six sense faculties function together and all objects practice together. So it is said, a stone person resembles you and sings a popular song. You resemble a stone person and are in harmony with the music of the snow. Exactly thus, exactly now, all sense fields are perfect wisdom. Everybody, do you enact this reality in complete detail? After a pause, Dogen said, who would complain that spring radiance does not seek after anything? The bright green grasses and hundred flowers are refreshing. For a practice steeped in sitting still, have you noticed how much riotous motion there is in Zen? Dogen tells us in his Mountains and Rivers Sutra in the Shobogenza that that the mountains themselves are walking. Who then can doubt that a stone person can sing? Or that, as the precious mirror Samadhi tells us, that the stone woman rises up to dance. Hakuin assures us in his song in praise of Zazen that singing and dancing are the voice of the law. A stone person singing popular songs and harmonizing with the silence of the snow. Snow that is, I hope, now just a distant, quiet memory, though the grasses here are still brown and beaten down after a long winter. But the green shoots have been popping up. On my walks down by Turtle Creek, the ground, frozen just a week ago, has now turned to mud. I see small flowers, white snowdrops, something purple, pushing up through the dead leaves, reminding me that, for lo, the winter is past, the rains are over and done. The deer in the fields behind us are shedding their winter gray for the browns of summer. On a day like this, according to the Blue Cliff record, Cheng Sha went off to wander in the mountains, and when he returned, the head monk of the temple met him at the gate and asked, Where have you been? I've been strolling in the, in the hills. Which way did you go? I went out following the scented grasses and came back chasing the falling flowers. That's exactly the feeling of spring, said the head monk. It's better than autumn dew falling on lotuses, said Chang Sha. And Sui Do wrote, I'm grateful for your reply. There is so little that we require. The sky over our head, a warm, gentle breeze, the light of a candle, the smoke of a stick of incense, the poet Galway Cannell asked us in his poem, Why Regret, to think of the wren and how little flesh is needed to make a song. Now this is the first night of spring and the last night of Seshin. Our ends become our beginnings. I would miss an opportunity if I didn't urge you all not to let down your guard your guard not to miss this precious opportunity to practice. No, I don't have to tell you not to pack up yet. We are, after all, all on Zoom and already home. But remember, the geese passing over us, for them and for us, what we need is here.